which I gather is something to do with raspberries. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Hello, everybody. This is my first fast Um It's quite impressive what's going on here. So uh, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you for having me. I'm here, as Brian said, to talk about the red method, um, patterns for implementation and monitoring for such a dry subject. I'm quite surprised to see so many of you, uh, but I'll try and make it a little bit more interesting. God, the audio is terrible, isn't it? Oh, it's just my voice. Um, <laughs> so we'll start with some questions. Um, this talk's mainly going to be about Prometheus and Kubernetes, for examples, but the theory is general. So who here is using Prometheus? Not too bad. Who is using Kubernetes? And who is using Prometheus and Kubernetes? Oh, okay, good, good. So, quick introduction, my name's Tom. David, who's in the crowd, and I started a company called Causal recently. It's just a two of us, we're bootstrapped, no VC. And we're running a hosted version of Prometheus, basically. Uh, before that, I worked at a company called WeWorks, which is where I kind of got into Prometheus and Kubernetes. Before that, did a brief stint at Google, with Brian, in fact. And uh, before that, another startup called Kunu, where we worked on Cassandra. This talk is going to be in four sections if I get enough time. How long have I got? Half an hour. talk is going to be in three sections. Um, <laughs> now we'll go really quickly. Use method, which kind of inspired the web method, and then the four golden signals, which is actually what inspired the web method. I just forgot about one of them. So, introduction. Why am I giving this talk? Uh, there's a Prometheus conference called PronCon. It happened in August, I think. And this red method thing was mentioned a whole bunch of times. And no one really kind of explained what it was. And we had a few people saying, what's this red method? What's this red method? And so the red method is a name I gave to these three signals you should measure from your services uh, in like 2015. Um, and I felt like, well, really somebody, you know, maybe me, should explain what I mean. Um, so that's why I'm here and why I'm doing this talk. And, and why, yeah, that's why I'm here. So we'll start first with the use method. The use method is something that a chap called Brendan Gregg invented, invented um, and it basically specifies for, for every resource in your thing, in your cluster, in your application, you should measure the utilization, the saturation, and the error rate. And it gives some basic definitions of these things. So utilization means for what percentage of time was this thing busy? Uh, saturation means how much work does this thing have to do? I mean, this is kind of poorly defined, as you'll see later. And error rate means uh, how many errors are happening, maybe per second or something. And a resource in this case might be your CPU, your memory, your disk, uh, your network is a good one. But it could also be things like the interconnect. It could also be kind of more virtual things. You could think of like queues of resources almost. Um, the use case for this I find generally is if you're hunting performance issues. And, oh, your phone's ringing. Should I talk to you? I'm using it to tether because the Wi-Fi it sucks. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't have tether on my phone. So this is more used for kind of hunting down issues. You know, it, it turns a kind of unknown unknowns into known unknowns. And you can now have a kind of methodical approach to hunting down performance issues. You know, it makes a kind of, oh, what do I look at when something's gone wrong into a kind of tactical problem, uh, which is why I like it. Um, I'm now going to give you some brief examples of how you do this with Prometheus and Kubernetes. So this is this would tell you the node CPU usage. Um, this is a particularly nice one. I took this actually off Brian. Um, you basically average it because this deals very nicely with different numbers of CPUs and different hosts. Saturation. This is really just just your run queue length, um, your load averages. So pretty easy to do in Kubernetes. Here I like to normalise my saturation by the number of CPUs, so I can try and like have no units on everything. So I know kind of 100% bad, above 100% terrible, below 100% easy. So this is kind of why I've divided it by the number of CPUs. You'll notice no way of measuring error rates on CPUs. Um, we did have an idea of using mtail to grep through dmessage and look for kind of like machine, machine check exceptions. And we did that on our machines and they're all running on Amazon, so there's just no errors. Um, I guess if there was an error, the VM would just disappear. So similarly, you can do the same for memory utilization. This is this gets really dry, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, but basically, you construct these queries that kind of go through and say how much of my memory is in use and how much of my memory saturated. The memory saturation is kind of a weird one. Um, Brendan's use method page says maybe it suggests maybe you use your paging rate. There's maybe a really high rate of paging in and out means you've got a lot of contention for your memory. Um, this is particularly troublesome because it doesn't have 
a, a unit that's kind of, you know, you can't think, what is 100% paging? Um, and again, no errors. And then, you know, the list goes on, and there's some really hard cases, like we've talked about CPU errors and memory errors. It turns out getting hard disk errors, errors out of the Linux kernel is relatively difficult. I think we found one in Cispus, but the node exporter doesn't scrape it yet. So I think, David, you're working on that one? Yeah, smart errors, you could use them because smart errors, I've, again, in a virtualized environment, smart errors are kind of meaningless, right? Um, and a lot of these are kind of meaningless in a virtualized environment. The other thing it doesn't really capture is like most of my, uh, well, not most, but a very common problem I've had when running systems is you run out of disk capacity. You know, where does that fit in this model? Um, network utilization is, is a really tough one as well because how do you know what 100% is? You kind of have to know that this instance has gigabit networking, this has 10 gigabit networking to get your kind of, and actually I was having a really interesting conversation with a chap from Intel about um, exposing metrics from your interconnects and from your PCI bus and everything. And I kind of asked him to do all the work. Um, but yeah, we don't currently have that yet. So a quick demo, and then we can get on to the actual thing we're here to talk about. Uh, there is one other thing I wanted to add whilst I'm mirroring my space, is that I've built a, uh, a little library called, it's got an awesome name, it's in our open source thing. It's called CLUMPS. CLUMPS stands for Kubernetes Linux Use Method with Prometheus. Um, but basically, if anyone can think of a better name, uh, that would be very welcome. But basically, it's a set of dashboards in Grafana um, for doing this kind of use method on Prometheus, with Prometheus on Kubernetes. And it's all written using JSONIC, which is a configuration language that kind of came out of a 20% project at Google. And I believe Grafana is very keen on JSON in the future. Yes. Yes, good. I'm very keen on JSON too. Um, but they kind of they kind of look like this. You, you write your dashboard and you say, you know, I want a dashboard and I want a row in there and I'm going to add some panels and then you get straight to your Prometheus query that we had earlier. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, and so, you know, we've done, we've gone through and done this for every single resource we can think of for both use, uh, use, uh, utilization, saturation, and error rate, if we've got one. And this is what it kind of looks like. This is running on our production cluster right now, one of the nodes. And you get utilization, saturation, there's no error rates. Memory utilization, here's the kind of paging rate, not particularly meaningful. There's no disk saturation, apparently. Network utilization, and then I just stuck this in there. The and we can do this cluster-wide as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, node, cluster -wide. There's cluster wide uh, use method clumps dashboards. The other thing we've added, it's kind of getting a bit off topic, but this is actually way more, way more useful. Is um, actually, I'll save this till the end. I'll just tease you with that one. <laughs> right then, so that's kind of the use method in, in eight minutes. Now we will move on to the red method I'm actually here to talk about. So, Oh, references to the use method. There's only really one, which is Brendan Gregg's website. It's fantastic. It's got everything you need to know. There's loads of pages, loads of detail. I've barely done it justice, so please go and, and read that if you're more interested. And, and there's the link to clumps. So the red method. The red method says, for every service, so we're not interested in resources, we're interested in the services now, microservices, services. <coughs> Measure the rate, the number of requests you're getting per second. The errors, the number of those requests that are failing and the duration of those requests. So the rate of the requests, the errors of the requests, and the duration of the requests. Why do this? Well, um, basically, we, we had someone join WeaveWorks when I worked there, and they asked us about our monitoring strategy. Um, we were just launching our hosted version of another product called Scope, another open source project. And we were like, you know, yeah, we've got monitoring, don't worry about it. And he's like, oh, do you have a do you have a methodology? How do you know you're monitoring the right things? And I was like, I have no idea what he was talking about. Uh, he said, oh, you should use the use method. So I went away and I, I went and read about the use method, and it was completely not what I wanted. I'd spent a few years at Google, and the use method was very much, you know, what you did for resources, and we were very much interested in what you did for, for services. And at this point, I didn't know about Google's SOE book. I don't think it was even out yet. And so I kind of said, look, we need something like the use method, but for services. And so I said, the web method because it kind of makes, you know, it, it makes a word. And I completely forgot about the fourth one. So basically, yeah, it came from four golden signals with a capture name, and I forgot the fourth one. But what's useful about this? Well, if you do the red method, and you instrument all your applications so they expose these uh, metrics, 
you can kind of get much better operational scalability. So an, an individual can be on call and can solve problems with your services without necessarily being the guy who wrote them, without necessarily being the person who you know, intimately knows the inner workings of that service. They can kind of treat them as black boxes as long as you're measuring the red method metrics of each of those services. And this allows you to get this kind of operational scalability and, and not have to be on call for code you've written all the time. You know, at Weaveworks, I looked after code I hadn't written, people looked after my code, and it kind of works. And same, same is true for Google. I mean, Google, I barely wrote any of the services. It also, it relates very closely to your SLAs that you should be offering your customers. So really, like, this is what you should care about. Like, you should care that your customers are happy. You don't really, like, this is the problem I have with the news method. It's this kind of, are my computers happy? Are my CPUs not too stressed? And do they have enough free memory and so on? And I don't really care if my computers are happy. In fact, it probably makes me happy when they're not. I care that my customers are happy. And my customers are happy when there's not many errors, you know, like less than 1% maybe, we'll see. And when the duration, like the latency of the requests are low. That's when my customers are happy, I hope. So this allows me to build SLAs. I, yeah, as I said, I came up with this in about 2015. I had a different haircut back then. I still have that t-shirt though. Um, and people thought I was trying to say that Brendan Gregg's method, use method was not the right thing, and it's not. These are kind of two complementary things. Anyway, super easy to do the red method with Prometheus. You declare the metric. I promise to have code on these slides, so here we go. You declare the metric. This is just boilerplate. You know, you need this once in your application, or for instance, with, with Causal and Cortex, or with Weaveworks, this just appeared once in a common library. Um, declares a, met, uh, declares a uh, histogram metric. Inside that, we, we break the metric down by method, root, and status code. And the method and root are kind of interesting, but the status code is the one that allows you to measure the error requests. One of the things you get with a histogram metric is you also get a count of the number of requests, and you get a sum of them. Yeah, counting the sum of the uh, times it takes. Now, that should get an average, for instance. And then when you want to instrument, this is, for instance, how you do it with HTTP services. I like the idea of having a little bit of middleware. So we, this, this wrap function takes a HTTP handler, instruments it, and returns another HTTP handler. And then the other thing I wanted to point out here is there's this really cool library in Go called HTTP Snoop. And this gives you a wrapper around a response writer that's instrumented. So go and get HTTP snoop, it will give it a, a response writer, it will return you your response writer that's instrumented, pass that on to the, the actual HTTP handler, and then when that's finished, you, uh, you can go and ask this about the metrics it's gathered. It's pretty cool, actually, if you look into it, it's like, had to do this auto-generation explosion of all the different interfaces that the response writer might potentially implement and so on. It's, there's a long thread about, is this the right thing to do, but I like it because it's one line of code. Uh, and yeah, also don't forget to expose the Prometheus metrics handler. And that's it, you've now instrumented your services with the red method. Unlike the use method, all the, all the queries for the red method fit on a single page. Um, and I will now type them in live to prove that I know what I'm doing. Well, or prove I don't. No, that's not wrong. So, this is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit and use Causal's interface, which is basically the same as Prometheus's interface, just blue and white. Um, and we can say, let's say uh, request rate for our dev cluster. So we do request, and the reason I'm cheating will become obvious because I have this awesome tab complete. Uh, awesome when, it, when I've got so many things. So I don't want that one, I want one that's empty count. So this is the number of requests we've handled across all our services. I mean, if we look at the table for this, you'll see, I mean, there's literally hundreds of services, and that's not particularly useful. So what I'm going to say is I'm only interested in a particular job, and that's going to be our dev front end, and I want to know a moving uh, one minute rate of that. So there you go, we're handling about 460 some uh, request a second on our development front end. This is actually interesting because the Wi-Fi at FOSDEM is exposing loads of Prometheus metrics and they're all being sent to us. And that's Ben and uh, Richie have done that. And well, they must have turned something off. Back on again. <laughs> and then we can start saying, well now we know how many requests a second we're getting, we can take the number of errors and divide it by this. So the way we do that is we go, that status code label that we put in the metric, we're going to say status code, and we're going to say it doesn't match a regex, which is 200. 
There were some errors. There was 0.03% errors. What, half an hour ago? Who knows? That was errors on our side, probably. And then the final thing we can do, and I'm not going to type this one in because it takes ages, and David's added this really cool autocomplete, is we can basically say, it'd be really nice if these were sorted alphabetically, David. <laughs> this is a bit live feedback. Um, request duration seconds, there we go. So this automatically sets up uh, the queries you need to get your 95th percentile, your 50th percentile, and your average. And then it takes literally seconds to calculate that. That shouldn't be that slow. Anyway, there you go. There's our kind of uh, latency going into our dev front end. Well, actually, this is going into both our front ends because it's not broken down. And we can see that our 99th percentile latency is, this is in seconds, what's that, 20 milliseconds? That's not bad. I'm happy with that. So, there you go, that's the red method. Not quite finished with it though, because one of the things I particularly like, I talked a bit about how um, the red method allows someone to be on call for your services when they haven't written the services. And you can imagine your, your microservice architecture to be a kind of tree of services, right? And if you've got this tree of services, maybe you've got a front end at the top, and depending on the path the user goes to, they get a different service, and maybe one of those services also has some supporting services doing maybe storage and so on. You can see how this model kind of fits. And what I like about the red method is you can map this straight onto a set of dashboards that you can build, and you might even be able to build it automatically, that kind of go depth first, no, breadth first through that tree, doing on the left your request rate broken down by um, success or failure. So that kind of covers rate and errors. And on your left, the latencies. And this is how we do all our dashboards, of course. Um, well, there's a picture of me, you know, you see the live. Um, and then you kind of get this nice and methodical approach. Something's gone wrong. What I do is I start at the top and I look for high latencies or high error rates, and I just keep going down until I see the service that's causing those high latencies and error rates. And then I've kind of pinpointed, in a very kind of unscientific way, the error. So this is a, there's a company called Vivid Cortex who wrote a blog post called Hierarchical Red Method. And this is, I kind of think, what they mean. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to focus in on is the latency measurements. So uh, I think I actually picked this trick up from you, Brian. Um, one of the things I always include in my latency measurements is averages. And you've probably seen talks where they say, never look at the average. Averages are misleading. And it's true, they are. I include the average for two reasons. One, it tells me if my histogram metrics are correct. So in Prometheus, the histogram metrics are collected as a series of buckets. So you've got like, all requests below a millisecond, all requests below 10 milliseconds, all requests below 100 milliseconds, and all requests above that. And if you get your buckets wrong, um, you can kind of... For instance, if you have like all your requests in the upper bucket, for me this will tell you they're all taking 100 milliseconds when they could be taking 25 seconds. Um, so your average, I, I plot the average, and I always hope it's close to the 50th percentile. Because if it's not, it kind of tells me, you know, if for instance the average is above the 95th percentile, then that tells me something's wrong with our buckets. The other reason I have the average is because the average is sum. You know, if I've got a service that does a request for another service and then a request for another service, the average latency of this service should be the sum of those two services. The same isn't true for percentiles. So this is kind of, I find averages useful, but, but yes, you should still use 99th in this case, percentile, because that tells me that most of my customers are happy. If you've got any questions, by the way, feel free to interrupt me. A bit more reading material. The slides will be online. I mean, the slides are already online. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other talks. I mean, this is like the fourth time I've given this talk. Um, the good ones are Cindy's Logs and Metrics talk. Cindy organizes the Prometheus San Francisco meetup and is a really good author. Um, so I would encourage you to read anything she writes. Um, Peter's the same, he's a really good author as well. And he mentions the whole, he mentions the Red Method a couple of times. Uh, he was a brief watch when, uh, when we came up with this. Last one, four golden signals. So this is really the thing that was the Red Method was supposed to do. I just forgot about one of the signals. Uh, what it isn't is a magic sticker that you put on your mobile phone. That's what you, if you Google, you know, golden signal, that's what you get. Um, so for every service, you measure the latency. This is like the duration in the red method. You measure traffic, which I guess is like rate, like request rate. 
Now you measure the error rate, which is exactly the same, meaning E literally stands for the same thing. And then you measure this one, which I forgot, called saturations. How full your service is. How full your service is. Like, how do we measure that? Um, I mean, I don't know you guys, I guess I should really go and do a lot of capacity planning and load testing of my service and know that with one CPU I can handle this many requests a second, but I have other things to do with my time. So I don't know how full my service is. And then someone suggested to me, well, the easiest thing to do would be to look at their CPU usage and look at how much of, say, the, uh, the limit of CPU you put on the service is compared, how much they're using compared to that. And that turns out to be really easy with, with uh, Kubernetes and Prometheus. So on, on our Kubernetes cluster, we give every pod a request, a CPU request. So we come along and say that this pod really shouldn't use more than one CPU. And we do this because we, we run our dev environment on the same cluster, we run different users and different jobs all on the same cluster, we don't want them interfering with each other. And it turns out we can just look at the proportion of that that it's using, and that gives us a kind of indication of how full this service is. So this one is actually... A, a real demo. Uh, mirror. Then we go. I'm going to have to copy some things out. This is all in the clumps dashboards, by the way, guys. If you, uh, it would be kind of useful if I could clear that all out as well, David. And instead of having to reload the page. Oh, the Wi-Fi is slow. So, what we're going to do in the clumps dashboards? There's this thing called namespace name cube pod container resources. So this is a little recording rule that we've written that tells us, uh, based on the namespace the job is in and the name of the job, and it kind of aggregates together jobs with the same name, how many CPUs they've requested. Okay, <laughs> Just give this chap so. <laughs> So yeah, so we basically say um, our ingester in prod needs six CPUs. This is quite large. I thought it would take more than that. And then what we can also take is a different one, which says container CPU usage second sum rate, which is telling us how much they're using. And we can just, just divide them to divide the two. And then we need namespace and name. And then if that works, it doesn't work. Namespace name. Try this one. Oh well, when it works, it works really well. <laughs> oh, that's going to really annoy me now. So, that one just doesn't exist, does it? So, what have we done wrong? We're probably not running the latest version. So, just. Um, No, okay, I give up. Oh, no, there we go, it works good. So now let's divide the whole up. There's a bug there somewhere. Uh, and let's take that one. This is how you know the demo's real. If, it was, if, that, if that worked first time, right, it would have been far too polished. And here we go. We can now tell how full our services are. And because we're monitoring the uh, FOSDEM Wi-Fi traffic with our system, you can see, like, time's up. Uh, luckily, this is my last thing I'm going to say. You can see that like our query in dev is actually 20% over its capacity. So now we know how full it is. And uh, that's it from me. There's more you can read and there's a summary. But thank you very much.
Now, um, there's like two schools of thought. I guess in the microservice world, you're not supposed to have different operations on the same service. Like, if it's a different operation, it might have to be a different service. Like, I don't know, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. Um, so I do, in fact, as you saw in the, uh, in the first bit of code, we include the, um, the method in the metric. And one of the things that's particularly useful, especially when alerting on these, is alerting on these by uh, broken down by method. Because, for instance, like you see in our latency is really low, but actually if you broke that down by a query latency, you'd see that one thing, which is really low traffic, has really high latency. So we do actually alert by method as well. So yeah, it's a good point. Thank you. Any other questions here? We've got better time for the how quickly would you do that if you have something like actors and power Because they're not synchronous calls. Show this directed graph there. If you have what food? If you have ACA reactive service. Oh ACA. Yeah, no idea. Um, okay. like, I don't know anything about ACA. There is there was there was supposed to be a fourth section to this, which I called because I didn't think I'd have time. Which is how you kind of monitor processing pipelines. Uh, maybe that's like ACA. But that, like, I would advise a kind of die testing approach where you inject some false events and then export histograms at each stage showing how long it took to process these false events. Um, that's how we did it. Any more questions there? You can come talk to me afterwards if you, you know, don't want to ask questions. Any more questions? Uh, we have the border here. All right.